From the legends who were there and who experienced firsthand the happenings of our musical industry. Part one. Welcome, 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 one and all. Welcome. Yeah, man, welcome, what? welcome. Part one, Tadipi. Wow, we're there, we're there. One more time, one more time. One more time, one more week. All right. One more week. Ladies and gentlemen, this is music. Journey. All right. Where we, <laughs> the reason with musicians, the you know, players of instrument, people behind the scenes and all that stuff. And you know, last week, who did up last week, Taddy? Great Paul Castic, man. Paul Castic, <laughs> all the bars of things. He shared his journey with us. And everything. Yeah. Welcome. Let's take some time, big up some people in the place. Big up Paul Castic, just arrived. Lengthy Mars, then. Big up Lengthy, big up Lengthy, big up Lengthy. Respect. You understand me? Clear and see you. Yo, Ron. Me see you, Ron. Me see you. Yeah, 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 yeah. One and all. Cash and big up. Mr. Fraser. Dean Fraser. Baby Keys. Raven. Me see you. Yeah. And Hottest, Hottest Wolves Alive. Yeah. Big up. Tracy Moy. I see you. Big well, up. Kenan, you are Dean Fraser. And I also know you have to big him up, you know. Yeah, man. Dean Kenan Fraser. You know. Leila Lock City. I see you. Super lighting guy, little John. Folk Fatasio. Respect one and all. Welcome to Music Journey. Maurice Greg, a big up yourself from boss. So, um, few little things before we get to go up get to. Big up Martin. Respect. Martin Lewis. Alright, so here we're Jeffrey going on. Khan. Jeffrey Khan in the building. Alright, so here we're going on. Perhaps yeah. yes. Um Next week, we're going to move the platform to Music Journey, Journey. JA. Yes. That's where we'll be broadcasting from, streaming from Music Journey, JA. So if you're not following, go follow Music Journey, go JA. Go follow it right now. Music Journey, JA. Yeah. All right? Um, the Facebook thing. Tell them about the Facebook thing. Well, we're on YouTube, you know, Music Journey 876. Right. Yeah. Um, Go and go subscribe now. Subscribe, share. You know, you know the foreign man say, come on, guys, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. <laughs> right? Um, yeah. This is me. I turn everything up to another world right now. Um, one thing after the other, after 2012, now look good for none of it. No, well, 2020, boy. I mean, I know. Uh, yeah, we said 2012. 2020. Yo, it, one it, thing it, after the next, after the next, after, after the next. The next. So we have the corona thing that was shut down the whole place. Big up Uncle Rufus, Rufus McDonald, big up yourself. Yeah. Right. So now we have the whole time something coming right back again. With circle and coming right back around boss. Black and white, something we are going. Boy, right? I think they're not stopping us, Steve. Boy, brother, I'm gonna know who are going, you know. Boy, you understand me? And it's not about it's not really about the, 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 the man who them killed the other day. Right? Floyd. It's not really about that, it's just a thing on him. I eat this now. We fed up. Yeah, man. You the cup full, man. The cup the full, man. And then, what we see happening now is the, the police, them, are fight back and the whole fire, they can't fight fire with fire, you know? Right? And it's like them now listen to the people, them, and the thing will get worse. And if you, yeah. the good bad, bad cop something, it just mostly bad cop. But now if you share that something, I want me to get the other day, right? Yeah. I'll share it. I'll Big up Trinidad. Now I'll share it with, now I'll share it with everybody. You don't know, sir, the American Constitution. See? Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, is it? Yeah, the Constitution Amendment, right? One of the most widely used means to defame the Constitution is to manipulate perception of the three fifth compromise agenda driven academia, academians and committed ideologies routinely state the U.S. Constitution only recognizes black, it only recognizes black as three-fifths of a person, meaning three that all three-fifths, black man is only three-fifths of a person. So 
I see them demonstrate and I'm fling things and bag things are going. See? And yeah. nobody read it. It's like say, you know, black people not really read. But the constitution said that. Say that. The constitution, the people them constitution said that and that right from way back when. You understand me? When the man them decide to put the thing together, world power and all them something. That you know the something cause it the constitution built from slave days time, you know. So black man is only considered as three people per person. Follow me, I say. I want serious thing. People need to be serious. So I got the need for fix. Yeah, and the whole thing to come back to normal. You understand me? I mean, I see nobody at that border. But that's where it go. What go up on your end of the island? They're meant to be right. They might be a cold man. We get some rain now. We can cool down the place. We don't know say how long the heat are going down. Yeah? Right, we get right, some right. Down, right. Some rain and thing. But be cool. Everything nice. Everything nice. Same. Yeah. Big up to you. Me see you. Tio, fix Tio, and see you. My brother, that. Bless up. All right, so, we have another little thing to talk about, which is a serious thing. You know the singer when you caution? Yeah, okay. man. All right. Long dreadlocks, man. There you go. Born to be jailed. Right. It's caution. Now, what's going with it? Unfortunately, caution diagnosed with stage 3 colon cancer. Channel star. All right. Stage 3 colon cancer. My virgin that in, yeah. in, 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 uh, apart from being a singer, he's also what call a, a craftsman in, uh, in building the studio. That's on the design and the Yeah, I see him do some work with Naristo up, up a hill top there. Yeah. See? So, on Tuesday, June 2nd, 7 p.m., he must share his story with um, Homegrown with Cole on Facebook Live. And the Facebook live name, My G Cole. Caution will share his story there. Right? Now, what happened is that hashtag tease 2 at hashtag tease 2 has jump started the thank you mission for caution. Right? Which you might try thing, medication, all of them something. COVID thing mash up everybody. Yeah. And you might do medicine something and all of them things. See? Yeah. So hashtag tease 2 has jump started the thank you mission for caution. Right? And she, and she started that from May 11. And up from May 11 till now, she has raised over 700 dollars and it's climbing. You know, donation, you send mm -hmm. something and then you send back a t-shirt with caution, some armband, wristband, something, them kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And a picture on all them things. As, you know, say you don't have big money, you get something. You get a t-shirt yeah, with yeah. caution. Right, right. And you know, you should have a cash up thing where cash up is at um, the Dollar sign, hashtag tease. This is hashtag T E S S. See? All right. That is that. Kashan, big up yourself, my brother. Yo, big up Kashan. No Give me prayer. that group yourself. All right. Big up. All right. So now, our guest this week is. Robbie Lynn, man. Robbie Lynn. What are you calling? The secret sauce? The secret sauce. Right? Right. When you have when 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 the music are clean them, they 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 they, 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 they um willing in them, all them things, Clive Hunt, all them kind of people. Eh? Robbie has been a part of all of them Sly and Robbie, all of them kind of the organization building thing. Big yeah. up Nikki. Robbie Lynn has Bert. been a part of all of that. Yeah. In the studio, share the stage, light parks and wheelie people, eight oh nine band, Peter Touch, all of them something. Big up can. So, Yo, me excited for your this a journey, I know. Yeah, that rabbit. <laughs> yeah, man, that journey. Yeah. The yes, journey I, want, I want to look forward to, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, so, all right, let me see what we're saying now. All right, we need 11 minutes, but we'll watch the clock and all these things. So, without any further ado, we're all bringing with, with, with thing. Quincy Jones, yes, see that? Quincy like, Jones, that like, reggae man. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Pete, we'll see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes. Stop. Tell me, Yeah, man. Uh, gentle people are bringing the guests. Yeah, man. Bless up everybody. All right. Later. Yeah, man. All right. So, or let me see now. Let us see now. Where is? All right. Here we go. Our guest this week. Robbie Ray Ray. Great one. 
Respect. Bless. Bless. Go on, go on, Robbie. Well, we're there, you know, the, you know, the everyday day at a time struggling, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're yeah, yeah. good, we're good. Health and strength there. Right. Fight, not, fight, not, navigate through the, what everybody have to deal with, so can't complain for myself. I have to just try and make the best of the situation, you know. Yeah. Welcome to Music Journey, brother. Um, my pleasure. My pleasure. I've been following you from the Derek Barnett. I'm sorry I missed Dean. I, I'm sure I can go back and watch it, but... Um, YouTube. The YouTube. Yeah, man, but uh, but uh, I've been in touch now, and I realize, yeah. you know, you have a nice, you know, following going there, so... Yeah, and we're building, we're building, we're building. Yeah, and so I hope I don't disappoint. No, man, you can never... Remember, you are a serious part of the journey, you know, our music yeah, journey. Man. You're a serious part of it, right? All right, so yeah. you know, I'd say welcome to the program, Robbie. Thanks again. Yes. Where it started? Where 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 the whole thing started? Oh, musician. When you decide to be a musician, what age do they know as a musician? All right. Well, from high school. Well, I hear Castic and Amanda. With you know, fortunate for them in that respect, Castic and Benji and the Herbert Morris people and others. They had a music program at school. I went to Saint George's College. We did not respect. Have a... Respect. I'll right, A M A M D G. Yeah, look, Derek Barnett. I know said if Derek did it, you know, waffle, waffle lick back. Because we have a band to name all in the blue, you know. All, all in the Jardis band. Yeah, man. We have a Jardis band, you know, but you know, we only do it for <laughs> occasionally and not for the last about a year. So that's the last time I said Derek. Jardis right. was his function. Right, yeah, right, so, right. yeah, I, we didn't have a music program, but the music interest was in my little neighborhood. Right. Because I grew up alongside a drummer named Phil Calendar. Right. And his brother, Tony. They came from Panama and settled in Jamaica. Phil ended up becoming a um, studio one drummer. Right. Played on, you know, with Jackie Mitu and um, Boris Gardner and Eric Freighter and, and those musicians, Vin Garden. So, from other music interest in school days, call it mid teens, you know. Right. We link up with Phil and other guys in the community because everybody did like play guitar and one or two men tried some singing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, occasionally it had come up by my, by my home because I had a piano at home. And when we wanted to play the music, it's either we kind of congregate and fill veranda about, you know, two, three, four different people are strum and table. But occasionally they come to my home. And we just jam, you know, top 40 songs and a little thing. And, right, right. and my mother was also a professional musician. And she okay. worked along. She worked along with people like um, Lenny Hibbert. Well, she was in Lenny Hibbert's band for a while. Headley Jones, you know, who Deadly, passed away. No, man, that, that's Headley Bennett. Headley oh, Jones. Jones. Headley Jones um, just passed away. He was a former president of the Federation of Musicians, but... He, he he was a, a Montego Bay resident. He he was president while, you know, running that chapter there. But he also had a band. And he also has his own story too, you know, because he was an inventor and builder of amplifiers and that sort of thing. So she had played in his band also for a while. Um, she ended up, you know, in, in terms of her last music stints, you know, she did um, cocktail pianos at various hotels and that sort of thing. So the music was here. So... What had happened? When she saw that I had an interest in music, um, at that time, Lenny Hibbert was um, in charge of the Alpha Boy School music program. Right. Right. So, you know, she made an arrangement that I could, after I left St. George's, you know, which is like five minutes walk away over to South Camp Road, I go over there. But um, nothing substantial came. But, you know, she knew that I had an interest in music and she was trying to see what she could do to, you know, kind of push my, my interest a little further. You know, oh. when we went over to Alpha, it was just like blackboard and chart thing, you know, instruments and nothing. It's just, you know, talking and things. So that never really came to anything. But um, we, we developed and we moved on. And, um, you know, the guys, as I said, you know, from the community, we started to do little light things. Right. And, um you know, it, it moved on after I left school. I had a job. Uh, and, nine to five? Yeah, actually, after after I left school, 
I was home for like six months, uh, you know, doing nothing. But they, you know, early the next year, I, you know, I got this job. And then one day, um, here comes said Phil Callender and Eric Freita drive down to my workplace. Right. All right. I was probably about 17 years old at the time. And boy, they said, boy, them have a thing happening musically that they would like me to come and do it. What it turned out to be was... Um, a promotion for a cigarette named uh, Embassy Kings. And um, the, the um, Ken Booth was supposed to be the front man for the group. Right. And I left work the same day. I just went to my boss and told him that, um, you know, something that, uh, you know, I've been approached to. And he was very gracious. He said, yeah, man, go. When, when it's done, you can't work. The job is here when you come back. Well, what, kind of, what, kind of, what kind of job is it? I didn't say, but <laughs> I tell you, it was, I, it was <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it was at K.I. John's Spanish Town Road. Um, okay. It was at Auto, Auto Parts Place. Okay, 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 okay. Right. right. So, so, yes. so, so, the, so the boss said, yeah, man, you know, no problem. You know, the job is here when you, when you finish and come back. Because that thing was supposed to go on for like two months. What it was like, with, with, the band was supposed to play around the island, you know, as I said, for said two months. Mm -hmm. promoting this this brand of cigarettes so I, I left that very day and went straight to studio one which is where the rehearsals were, were being held right and and um so i was recommended by phil of course because of my brethren and we, we try to put our little band together which eventually became in crowd band in crowd, you know, they, in crowd yeah yeah you know you know we did fairly well and thing you know but um any case yeah, that's where it began. So it began with, with this promotion for the cigarettes. So Ken Booth is a lead singer, Phil on drums, me and, well, it is they're just basically organ. Right. And Leroy Sibley's on bass and Eric Freighter. And um, so went around, we rehearsed and um, hit, the, hit Jamaica Roads for two months. And at the end of those two months, um, Coxon, Clement Dodd decided that he was going to stick with that unit with the addition of um, another keyboard player named Richard Ace, who was, you know, kind of a regular at Studio One. Bigger man, you know, to, to me, yeah. of course. And then he put back the hand section together with um, Vin Garden and Deadly Headley. That's a oh. Deadly Bennett now, right? right. And, and not to forget Denzel Leng, father of Tony Leng. He was like the percussionist there. He, he just lived up the road on Brentford Road. So... Coxon started recording, so as now a member of Sound Dimension, you know, studio band. And oh. in between all of that, now me and my bridge and them, we, we, you know, a little commercial and occasionally on a Friday, Saturday, we play at a little small venue and thing. And, yeah, you know, yeah. it mushroomed into something else, but that is pretty much where it began. So, studio one, you could say, is my real pro first professional, you know, job. Apart from the being paid, of course, to the the, the right, swing right. thing thing with Ken Booth, and while while that that brought up my very first recording because um the, the cigarette company decided well we need um some a song or two to help enhance apart from Ken just singing his regular hit songs you know puppet and a string that sort of thing they wanted to identify with their own song so. They had a jingle type song called um, Embassy Kings, of course, you know, talking about the cigarette. Oh, no, and no. on the flip side of the record, which you could say is my first commercial recording, was a song named Without Love, right. which was covered by Leroy Smart and made a hit by him. Right? I don't okay. remember when I was a boy, that, that's, that pretty much was my first commercial recording. We may not play organ and piano on it one time because they, never, they, they couldn't know what I mean, Just play a little one note in, pop, 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 pop. You know, so, yeah. right. So that that and then after that, I said, you know, pseudo one, you know, couple of days a week for, you know, for a period of time. Right. Different artists, big artists, new artists, audition artists who never make it. You know, we said they want come and go. You know, but the big, big thing, yeah, but the big singers were were some of them. You know, were, had been recording with pseudo one before. You know, Bob and the Alton Ellis. You know, and others. Right, okay, 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 okay. So, after Studio One, right, not really after, but you move from Studio One to where? All right, well, there are two stints that Studio One actually, because Cox not closed the studio in 60, 
eight, I think, or early 69, as right. I was trying to figure it out whether a guy was doing some research on it. And he opened a new room, and the studio sounded completely different. But that went on for like, um, in, call it to the end of 69. But during all of this time now, I was still with my guys, you know, so to speak. And, yeah. you know, we had a little band going, and it, as I said, eventually became in crowd, but we weren't really out there yet. Right. But after studio one, um, you know, I said some freelance sessions, you know, you know, man just called for doing it, you know, work along with different musicians right. until, you know, the in crowd band thing got going out, so we're playing around, around you know, the, the circuit, you know, those days, clubs, you know, graduations, right. New Year's Eve, ball, them sort of thing there. Right. But I became associated with the now generation band at the same time, which is the band with Mikey Chung, Jeffrey Chung, Val Douglas, right. Wire Lindo. Well, yeah. they had a drummer named Martin Sinclair. And, um, but he was like the, origi the official member of the band, but he had a nine to five job. And when he couldn't handle the, the recording session thing, because Nogen started to get a lot of requests, and they came off the road pretty much. They were doing what in crowd and other bands were doing. But when there was a big demand for them to do session work, um, they brought in Mikey Richards. Who, right. Right. Mikey, you know, was also the original member for 809, which all of this came after. But Mikey was an in crowd. Mm. But so me and him actually were in no generation studio band. Because of oh. the unavailability of the no generation nine to five drummer. Right? So this is early seventies now, going into the mid seventies, you know, we did a lot of sessions for Harry J, like be breakfast in bed, you know. Notable songs are talking about Imas Gun for Abyssinians. We had a stint at the Federal. That, right? The original Imas Gun, yeah. That that was done for a producer named Lloyd Daly, otherwise known as Matador. Okay. Yeah. He had also produced some Dennis Brown songs um, recorded, I think, at Federal Studio, like Things in Life and Thing. We're also recording for like Derek Harriott, you know, mm -hmm. um, Silhouettes, you know, all of these are no gen recordings. And while we're at um, Federal as the so called host band, you know, we've done stuff with like Ernest Smith and Pluto Shervington, okay. you know, and that sort of thing. So this this ran into the early 70s, mid 70s, and not long after I, I officially left in crowd. So I was just freelancing, do, doing session work, right. you know, with other musicians too. But when it sounds like the young people and one of them hit the from way back come right up, you have something to do with something. One, one or two, most of them. Well, there was a time that, you know, you know, people used to, you know, check for me them way there, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> still <laughs> well no, well to a certain extent you know man might call me because he might identify as something he might want in a particular song but there are so many other talented good musicians now right right, right. you know that a man if him, if, if it's a matter of unavailability him just move on and do something else but you know you have other guys come and do other things you know you know and you know, um, I don't necessarily have to do it, you know. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I'm on so, call me so, Robbie, but there, no, but there was a time that certain people said, Boy, if them call me, and them say, Boy, I, I can't come to ask me, wait for you, you know, them yeah. type of thing, eh? yeah, 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 right. yeah, 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 same thing like with Dean Fraser, I'm on with it, wait for Dean, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and other people, <laughs> no, other people, yeah, 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 producers will wait on a certain person for them yeah, to come and do them thing. Well, I was, well, I was. Well, in that, in, I was in that situation, you know, on occasion. Most of the time, you have to on occasion. Most of the times, they wait yeah. on Mr. Lynn. Well, as we yeah. said, you are the secret sauce to our music. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, <laughs> and you see what happened by that time. Yeah, and you see, 70s and, you know, we're just keyboard players. We're just basically confined to a s certain instruments. It was... Primarily, if you're talking about reggae and, you know, reggae music, Jamaica music, it's just piano and organ. Then here comes the clavinet, here comes the electric piano. And that was it until the synthesizers now started to come in. And, um, you know, you have to kind of stay with the game. So, you know, I, I had invested in a synthesizer pretty early along. You had other people who had done that, done that before me. And I was involved with certain productions that they would call in other people because they had the synthesizer. I, I was working 
with, with Peter in Studer from in the 70s, and I didn't have a synthesizer for myself at the time, but right. when, when it was needed that they would call in other people, you know? Right. And I'll have to... that, 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 Peter, Peter touched what I talked about, right? Mm. You, you play upon most, or all, most of them Peter Touch Jr. coming up? From early Peter Touch on them? Not the first two albums. The first two albums were done... Um, the one, the one legalize it, yeah, and and the other one done for Colombia, you know. Mm -hmm. Though a, a lot of the musicians that were on Peter's first two albums, right, were people affiliated with the Wheelers. Okay. You had um, you know, like Carly, Santa, Tyrone, mm -hmm. you know. You might have Asley and Robbie, you know, inserted here and there, but um, other people, other freelance people, other keyboard player named, named Tarzan, Errol Nelson, he might have done some recordings. But right. the first album, I'm trying to remember the name of the, the, the other one, Legalize It, and popular, popular album done for Colombia. But Jazz but, had but, the whole of them. So Jazz huh? had the whole of them. And Dean, you know, the whole of them album that by art. You know. Yeah, Jazz I should have known it, you know, but sometimes my mind just not pick up fast. Yeah, man. yeah. You know, come have the album, I can walk two feet and pull out the vinyl right out of the rock right or something. Right, it did it. Yeah, yeah, but even before that, you know, said no gender record Marga Dog with Peter, you know, the original Marga Dog. Um, because he did it, to, he, he, yeah, yeah, he, he had done it over with Sam and Robbie when I was officially a member, you know, but that time now is when he signed up with Rolling Stones record and he, he redid songs, that, you know, say like Bob, Bob re record over songs in his popular days, of, you know, songs that he had recorded before him, just touch them up, give them the. The, the healthier song with the newer instruments. Right. Same, same thing with Peter. Marga Dog now was done at um, Joe Gibbs Studio when Joe Gibbs was in Doe the Park, which right. turned out to be Bonnie Lee's studio. Yeah, so I got right? it. So that was now, Jen, um, me and Wire again, but with its, with its switch, must say, Wire must say they play a piano and play the piano in church. You know, Wire is the lead man, you know, the keyboard together. You know, <laughs> so me, they play our gun, but it's Wire, they play the... And then, yeah, I think I... I, I it wasn't one of the guitars was um, not from Nogen. I don't remember who didn't play on the session, but it, it was a Nogen session. You know, all of them time in early 70s, my work for Lee Perry at Black Ark Studios. I work oh. with um. By that time, one of the reasons why why Nogen became so popular as a studio band was because of the because of Jeffrey Chung. Jeffrey Chung was proving himself to be a very very worthy producer. And right. he was also a businessman, you know. You know, a lot of musicians them days, they just go see them, play them, pack up and them do this. Jeff knew the business. He was dealing with publishing and, you know, little things that would protect his interests. You know, right. he's the one who got the sessions, call, call the musicians. Right. And he was working with people like Pablo Moses them days, uh, you know. So right. Pablo, Pablo Moses' first set of recordings were done at, at, at Lee Perry studio, like um, I'm on a grasshopper and them things. It was Jeffrey Chung. Then eventually it moved on to bigger studio now, you know, like at Dynamics with Paved the Way and Revol um, you know, the, 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 the popular Pablo Moses tune. Jeffrey had a lot to do with those productions, okay, right? Okay. And this is in the, the mid to late 70s. So, you know, I, I, I was all over the place, you know, you know, in the time they're working with different, you know, in, <laughs> different people who have them thing going, you know? Yeah, because you get, you, you get called regular, but I'm going to come out now. If a man could find you in them days, because they must say them days the cell phone thing never work. A man up a drive, come find you. Yeah, well, well, I had a phone at home, you know, them days. It's the dial but, up phone, yeah. But, uh, but, but sometimes if a man do have him, you know, a man drive come my yard. Yeah. You know, I can't yeah, I remember the day when, when Lee said Lee Per drive up on my gate with Bob, with Bob Marley. He had a session and him, it's like him and Baba Spar and him just decide to do a session and him, and him literally drive come on the gate. Yeah. And, and we ended up at Dynamics doing that session. It, and I, ironically, I was with Peter Tosh at the, at the time. Okay, okay, right? okay. And ironically, again, mm -hmm. it was within one week of the Peace Concert. <laughs> And a lot of people who come to peace concert were coming with without mind. I walk in them coming to enjoy the music, them coming to support the cause. But some people come to see who was going to be better, Bob or Peter, who went outside because Peter was generating a lot of interest because of his outspokenness. 
and what his rhetoric and what his rhetoric was going to be and of course every nobody was disappointed but just, we on the bandstand didn't know what was going on when peter yeah. did like a half hour bongo clip clippings mm -hmm. and you know rasta castle type of language you know i was trying to keep it in perspective because of who was there right but it just turned out here i am in peter's band and my record with bob marley the same week all right yeah 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 and, and we recorded two songs on that session, um, which eventually came on the Confrontation album. But it was um, Lee Perry's production. It was all about Lee Perry. He write the song, them, I guess, and thing. And, you know, it was some of the whalers were on it, myself and two of the um, non whalers musicians. Right. Actually, three, key three keyboards I played one time. I was, why I did play a gun? Charles right. Ferguson was on piano. That's Bulgy, who played with Inner Circle and Affiliate. Played with Toots up to about a year or two ago. Right. And I was clavin at me play live one time and but they had like Junior Marvin and guitar and Billy Johnson and guitar, you know, and yeah. you know, yeah. and, yeah. and, yeah. and yeah. Carl. Right. So, you know, it uh, Rastaman, Rastaman Live Up and um, Black Man Redemption. Those are the two songs we did that night. Okay. And uh, so that was uh, you know, just going out of bounds a little like, not me. Jeffrey Chung, that was the first time Jeffrey Chung actually did a recording as an engineer because when we come to the studio, him just invite Jeff, that is Lee Perry, just invite um, Jeff to come for just kind of oversee and give a vibe and thing. Well, good, no, no, engineer, no, no engineer was not the studio. Jeff did just start learning a little about you, learning the board because he was starting to mix and he would just sit down, sit down at the board and tell the engineer, go plug in this or another, sir. Okay, move it, move it to the sir. And him don't move from the board for the It was, a, it was, Kind of tedious to watch him I walk up and down a plug in wire and all them things. I mean, no, that was Jeff, that was his style. But yeah, I don't did it, him did it all alone and bringing and balancing drums and everything. And that was the first session that I know that Jeffrey Chung actually was an engineer. That was his job the night. We sang this Rasta Man Live Up and Black Rasta. Man Redemption Bob, right. from the Confrontation album. When I hear that, Jeffrey Chung. No, no, no. Yeah, man. First, first, you know. First. And Jeff became one of the wickedest mixing engineers after, you know, years after. You know, yeah. even when in his ill health and all of that, you know, was still in demand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I picked up Virgin Jeff Round, two days older than me. I went to the, I was, were schoolmates too. Can't forget them things. Georges, right? Georges, yeah. And that, that said, so was Val Douglas and so was Mikey Chung, yes. Good, 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 I, I forget the blue. I have to plug the blue, you know? Yeah, man. I saw him come up with Jazzy's logo. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Alright, what you know, Rabbi? Stage. We talked about yeah. stage. We'll get back to the studio, but we'll go stage now. First big stage, because you know you have the little, little circuit them from the band, little band thing to um, yeah. that the no generation and all that something. Now we got big show now. Big pretty yeah. light. Big stage. No people. Yeah. We thought that. That would have to be Peter because in crowd did travel, you know. You know, went and but you know, it's like a man of a little club and him him one. Because I remember the the band went up to New York for a bridging. Not necessarily a show promoter, him he's a businessman and we went with Burning Spear and Dennis Brown and another occasion we went with Alton Ellis who didn't come back from Canada and just went up there and nobody never seen him after. But in terms of the big scene, that, that would have had to be Peter. Because oh. um yeah, because I I ended up going in Peter's band within a year, maybe six months after I had resigned from In Crowd. You know, okay. as just, as uh, after I left In Crowd, end of seventy five, I think. Right. Um, I just you know just just doing studio as a freelance musician, and then one day Herbie Miller, um, who is now in charge of the the, the, the museum down, downtown. He, he actually lived pretty near to me and he just came to me one day and said, boy, Peter put in a band together and asked if I was interested. So it, it wasn't long after I left him crowd that I was actually asked to play Peter. But yeah. there was no big dates yet. You know, we, we made a little Caribbean trip to Trinidad and mm -hmm. some other place, which... Didn't, no, didn't... Not, not Peter Osborne, Peter Tosh. Yeah, Peter Tosh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Peter you know... Tosh. So it's the first time I'm actually traveling. So like a Caribbean trip, almost a disaster. And you know, we came back and then we did a a, a big music festival in Bermuda. 
right. you know, we like over a period of time, like a two day thing, like people like Ramsey Lewis and those type of people. Right. You know, it was uh, in Hamilton, Bermuda. And then um I guess the next big event with with Peter would have been the world the peace concert at Stadium. Alright. You know, it's All a right. Jimmy Pick up in right, Jim right. Jim in right so. mm. Were you the band leader? No. You me just a tag, me, me just a tag along. <laughs> you just act to the one. Me just behind this. Me just a su supporting actor. <laughs> <laughs> no man, it's Sly and Robbie them days then. You know. Sly, Sly and Robbie and Alan Listen, they actually play with Peter that night. So okay. Alan Listen, who, who was with, uh, with, with, with Bob on and off. He was okay. uh, and with Peter sometime, gone to Bob sometime. But Alan Listen actually played with Peter that night. Um, it was, you know, so I, I was not the band leader. That, that was... After Sly and Robbie had left. Okay, we're going to go back to how you meet Sly and Rabbi, you know. But, but we're mm. not going to we're, we're, we're talk about it. Tell me about the, finish tell me about the big thing, the big show, the big, that, that something, that stage, because I remember all that music journey where we are talking yeah, about. Yeah, the, the big show is now. When you yeah. look on the stage, the crowd, the light, the, 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 the excitement, you know, this bigger than we ever see before. Yeah, all right. We're going, we're going fast forward to 1978 because after the peace concert, I, I just going to talk that I don't have to backtrack too much. Yeah. Um, Mick Jagger was backstage at the Peace Concert, right? Okay. That's Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones, mm. who's still existing as a group, so you know. And they, Mick was impressed. He was also free like a bird because this is one place he never fell walk with two big security bodyguard with him. He just free a walk up and down the place. And he approached Peter or Herbie or somebody. I said they had an interest with with with, with Peter because right. I think Peter was no no longer with Columbia. He he was okay. basically a free person to you know deal with you know whatever he wanted to. Right. So the move was made by Mick Jagger, and before you know it, contract signed, and um, we flew up to to upstate New York where we recorded the first Peter Tosh album on the Rolling Stones label, which is I guess the Bush Doctor album. Bush and while we're in the studio, this is, this is a place upstate, I'm trying to remember where it is, but um, it was near where they had the Woodstock Festival, apparently. Mm -hmm. And the reason why Rolling Stones used that studio, because that is where they were rehearsing for, for their big North American tour in 1978. Wow, and yeah. this is how um, Mick Jagger ended up singing um, um, the, the duet with, with, uh, with Peter, Walk and Don't Look, Look Back, because oh, Peter had oh, recorded oh. that song before now. Right. As I said, you know, you know, them re of a song. But, you know, it, you know somebody said, well, a good idea and good promotion for, for Peter if, if Mick was on one of the songs. Right. And, and then also Keith Richard, who was the partner for Rolling Stones, you know, when you talk about Mick, you know, me, you have to talk about Keith. Yeah. He ended up playing guitar on a couple of the tracks also. So we're up, up there, and so they could come in and, you know, be on, uh, on, in the production room and recording and you know, by this time now it was and Robbie and um Donald they brought in Donald Kinsey and but Donald you know he was just there because we just need to have somebody but what had happened when we almost finished recording the album up there Stones was getting ready to go on the road and um they said boy it would be good to give Peter some sort of um promotion or you know thing with the upcoming album that come out and introduce them to their crowd, which are rock bands, yeah. right? So it's, we're talking about stadiums now. We're talking yeah. about Oakland Stadium, you know, and I think on that show, uh, I, don't, I don't think Santana, that, that was Santana's hometown, but we're talking about big bands. We're talking about Journey. The, the you know the, the the original group journey with Greg Rowley, the keyboard player, who was with Santana. Him and Neil Sean, the guitarist, left Angle Farm Journey. So they ran some of the you know one or two of the, the Rolling Stone things. Um, a band named Kansas, big rock bands. You know, I talk about mega groups. You know, if my, some of the name them now gonna mean anything to, but what talk about sixty thousand people in Brown Stadium in Cleveland, the the Los Angeles um stadium where the baseball team play. Yeah. We did Colorado, you know, at a, at a university, you know, them university have them big stadium, them all, all 80,000, 90,000 people. So we did the tour pretty much, not every single date, 
we did one of the Rolling Stones tour, but we had to quickly arrange to get a bus and um, to go on the road. So this, this is where we really got introduced, introduced to the mega sized crowds. You know, some people were kind of met with re mixed reaction because some people never really know anything or much about reggae. And yeah. you know, them, them, them rap fans, you know, them, them, them people, some hardcore people, them love them alcohol and whatever. Yeah, for, yeah. For, you know, for, for kind of make them enjoy it more. So you talk about some hardened people and, you know, but for the most part, you know, they're respectful and with the exception of one time, somebody must have thrown something for the stage, you know, they must have, must have couldn't wait anymore for the big boys to come on, you yeah. know, so, yeah, but, you know, I remember one of the big shows, you know, Etta James was very big, you know, and, you know, at the time as a, as a blues singer and she had one of the biggest hits that I did to, you know, um, you know, recent in recent times, every female singer when I'm going to sing them sing that tune. But oh, from Robbie. a set of them, eh? Robbie, tell me about that talk about Robbie Lynn now. It's Robbie Lynn. Tell me about that something now. Well, you say, Raw George, Mick Jagger is backstage. All right, bam bam, we have got New York record, the Rolling Stone something. That yeah. anxiety something, that, that little butterfly thing, that, oh, that's how you feel. I know you're going amongst. The big boys, them knowing. Yeah, because even sometime, you know, even sometime when, 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 when I'm um, at the concert, them boxy. Well, when them on the, them not come through crowd in a limousine. As helicopter come drop them off, and as them done them last tune, them jump back in helicopter and gone. And people yeah. are ball for and core not knowing. So them is five miles away, then back to. And when them come into a town, them book all five different hotels, you know. So that they, they are mysterious. Nobody can find them. And people kind of looking at us. Oh, them little Jamaican. Not yet, boy. Well, not me, but <laughs> how come? How come after this? this how, how come after Peter come? Mick and, and Kita come hug up them money and I go and like them his childhood friend and things. So we feel, there's a glow, you know. We say, boy, we feel big, you know. And I'll, you know, I'll, and I'm driving a limousine every time, and 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 you know, even make security to them up. Get people out of the way for, for pass and all them things. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah man. But you know, it, it was it was it was enlightening and, and encouraging because you know the, you know the, you know you can't see that there's a picture unfolding and you know them said this is what people you know looking for to you know yeah. to, say, to, to move them thing along. The, the thing why, why me I say this right because for me know you a while now, brother. Mm. Is a man that showed no farmer. Anxiety, emotion, you know. Yes, I said, yeah, man. All right, cool. It's like, well, you, you know, know, you know that, that, may, that may be true. Never know. I draw my little joke and thing. And some people say, boy, Rabbi, you know, you're, you're different or something. But for the most part, I just kind of just lay, lay low. Yeah. You know? but, yeah, I don't, I don't promote or hype or certain thing. I'm not drink for getting at them frame of mind for say, boy, I lose control of myself. Them way, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. What? Where's it? Say so you see the star setting from a long time then. Been there, you done that. Where, where? Don't it? Well, yeah, yeah. You know, we, we meet certain people, and I even remember when they were on under on the said Rolling Stones tour. They, they had Peter had to book some days just to keep the the the, 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 the um the economy going. So. When when the man the Stones play, they play but once or twice a week. Them play, and we can't have a bus. And per them for pay, and you just have play the two, one or two show them a week. So I had, them had to book some little clubs that we could go and offset some of the expenses. Yeah. And what was happening at the time is that um, I think at some time people go start leaks about why Mick went turn up for, at Peter's show. Yeah. So when we got a, he had an excess amount of people come to see Peter. And I guess some of them is anticipation that Mick, the big star, was going to be there. Yeah, right, right, mm -hmm. right. So, so was, you know, all of them turned the black. Eh? All the club show the rum. Yeah, yeah. Some of them are some small clubs. I remember we did Roxy in um in in Los Angeles. It was a very popular mm -hmm. spot. That's the first time I actually saw Jack Nichols. He was just hanging out outside because there was another popular place nearby. I would yeah. did like two shows, you know, that night. And that one night, me yourself, Verdi and White from Burton and Fire was there. And all sorts of people turn up that you don't even know them, they are there. Right. You know, but, you know, when we meet um, people in, when we, when we, that, that was like Peter's show. But okay. I don't know if, I don't know if 
Mick was supposed to come, but, but the club, them, the, the two shows were solo. When we did a, a popular place in New York, people like Robert Flack turn up the backstage, all Paul McCartney, there's a, you know, the, um, them type of people, uh, um, all policemen are giving me all hundred dollars for, for autograph and all them sort of thing there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but there's a very popular, there's a very popular photo that been making runs to the longest while. That was at Peter show backstage, that was saying, where you have Bob, Peter, and Mick Jagger. You can look it up. I think yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Bob came to Peter's show that night, right? Mm. And that is, you know, you know, the camaraderie backstage and, and this. Stuff. So, you know, we met all sorts of people. In New York, we meet, um, you know, big actor, because Peter's publicist and manager, them, they, they, they were well known in the New York here. They know all sorts of people. Right, you right. know, right. Yeah, you know, my, my meet man like Harrison, um, the, the actor there. Ford, um, Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. One night, a man come and introduce. Oh, this is um Bob Kennedy Jr. All them sort of things. So we we, we we mix and and touch people. You know, never to be seen again. But yeah. it, it it leaves some type of satisfaction that you know you're worthy of. You know, your work carry it to a certain place, and you know you can at least look back on 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 some of those things and say, well. You know, I had a touch with the royalty, all they were all humans. I don't think yeah. anybody that much better than anybody else. But, you know, sometimes you look, you know, you, you must have been caught in a situation years or such and such is in a, in a place yeah, and yeah, you yeah, have yeah. a look, you yeah. have a look on them because, you know, so you probably won't get the chance again, yeah? All right. Big question there, Archie, now. How was it working with, with Peter, Peter Tosh? How was it working with Peter Tosh? I had no problems with Peter Tosh, you know, especially the first, you know, you know, the, 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 the growing part of it, you know, Peter, mm -hmm. Peter's very misunderstood. Mm -hmm. People had Peter as, you know, braggadocious and, you know, just, you know, you know, loud, but, you know, now that we're looking back, realize what I was dealing with, right? Oh. Mm -hmm. But there are times... Peter was so quiet you wouldn't believe. And on, on the tour bus, him round the back by himself. You know, him, him, you know, after everybody done play, sometime on the Rolling Stones tour, oh, where's the party at? You know, Peter said, oh my God, my room go sleep. You know, so he wasn't that type of person after be all over the place and run go meet this person, you know, him, him, you know. But him had in time now that he, 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 you couldn't get him from stop that. When, 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 when we're on tour and we're going to the diaspora now, we go to Chicago. And mm -hmm. we are a lot of Jamaicans are in New York. And when they show them down and everybody want to come on backstage or come meet, it's like it's another show all in itself with Peter that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Them, these are people who look to Peter you know, for, you know, as a philosopher. You know, him, him predicting things, him, him, him singing about things, him telling you what to do about certain problems. So people kind of come for some type of guidance to say, boy, yeah. you know what's going on in the world and why we we struggling and we, we, we're fighting a fight ourselves and, you know, what you have to set away. Right, and right. sometimes it just, you know, it, it depends on that level. Or sometimes it just all humor. It just a run joke and thing. Yeah. And I didn't have a problem with Peter, you know, we enjoy him, play him, come kick little ball, you know, everybody go up on tour them, you know, play little, little yeah. this and little that. You know, it's never isolated. He never isolated himself. He just that sometime I forgot to a press conference or I forgot to the media and him take him and him gone. You know, but him, him and the musician them live good. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. I need a segregation something. Mm -hmm. right, but, but, but most of the the, 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 the young artists them nowadays, right? Yeah. A few of them I, I know about that. The, the segregation. I can I, I can understand that too, you know, because you have you have you have the star image people them and they're yeah, but kind of sometimes trying. if you know which part to leave the star right the star some, of them, to, some of them trying to some of them trying to glorify themselves about you know being in a different class and you, you have to treat them different and you have some of them you know it's a team everybody's the same right you know, but you know i've seen and heard about certain not you know well say, say american thing them and how them treat the musician and thing, you know, you know, them, you know, that them just using them to, you know, to, to do them, what them have to do, them do them work. But apart from that, them, them do show them much respect. You know, I was never in that situation. And never curse us out if, if the band never saw hot one night, he might say, boy, you know, you know, such and such. 
you know, but it's not like some man who might cuss you and say, oh, you're your pure, this is your player and all them things. Nothing like that. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay. Mm -hmm. The respect was always there. Yeah, man. Yeah, we got on quite well. And you see, it, you see, it, Sly, Sly and Robbie were kind of guiding Peter to it on a musical level. Right. Because it might to show about that respect. Because Peter might be writing songs and him play a little guitar and little keyboards and him have him ideas and things. But when it come on to the, ev the evolution of the music now, you're going to need influences from other places. And them days of Sly and Robbie you now coming up as young producers in their own right. Mm -hmm. And it, it's after they had left Peter or close to when they were leaving Peter that them start to carve their own niche as, oh. as rhythm twins. You right. know, so they were they were starting to get that sort of respect. Mm. And and I guess Peter was trying to get some of that from them too. Mm. Because even when we do Buckingham Palace, is Rabbi just say, I'll oh, we'll play that tune that way, you know. Because him say, This is your music, reggae music. And people say, But I know reggae, the tune not really reggae. But I thought Rabbi decided the tune going someone like Rabbi. Rabbi was trying to pattern off of somebody else's hit song and him just say, I saw what I'm going to do it. And Peter not say nothing. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. One of Peter, became one of Peter's most popular songs. Yeah, man. Light of the Choice, the Buckingham Palace. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it was influenced by Rabbi in that particular case more and, and Sly, because you know, Sly is a man who come with all of the, the fancy new thing them that any other drummer try anything, people say, oh, what that you know? <laughs> well, yeah. Right, 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 right. Alright, so we move now from 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 the Peter Tosh thing. We got taxi connection now. Sly and Robbie with it now. Sly and mm. Robbie, one thing now. You were somewhat a part of that taxi connection thing. All right. Well, not initially. I was at that time with Sly and Robbie mostly in the studio because by that time them them start you know even with Peter now them start their own production. You know, recording mainly at Channel One studio. You know, there was the Dennis Brown, was um, Einika Mose, uh, Jimmy Riley, them sort right. of thing. Right. Black Uhuru. So is is after the Black Uhuru come come to note now, I saw Rabbi them. I, I, I guess business wise and otherwise now them say boy it's Black Uhuru time now you know. And they pretty much just say right now, them going to move with that because that is pretty much their thing. Right. And so, so they left Peter and try, you know, they recruited one or two other musicians because at the same time I was playing with Keith Sterling, the other keyboard player. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't remember if I was asked to go to the Black Hole trip because what had happened that year, that year would have been 81, I think. After Stan Rabbi did a tour. With, with Peter, mm -hmm. them had a black hole thing coming up in a matter of weeks. Right. So them take with themselves now. Russell and all these and, things. And Sterling gone with them. So who right? Peter left with? Them left with me. Steve Golden had just come in. Steve Golden right. came on that last tour that that um that Sly and Rabbit did. That is when Pete um Steve Golden came into the band. So him pretty fresh in the band. Yeah. And so it's me and them bringing um oh by the way da, da, um the late Daryl Thompson was also a part of Peter Band up the time when Sly Rabbit stepped and them take Daryl also. So okay. right, so Sterling pretty much four of them. Mm -hmm. You know, eventually Bubbler became the, the keyboard player with Sly Rabbit. Taxi taxi, you know, or whatever. Taxi name yeah. it was going for at the time. So so we had two plus weeks to prepare now for Peter's next tour. Mm. But Sterling gone with Sly and Robbie. Right. So this is where I come in now because I'm calling fully on Santa. Yeah. By that time the the the, 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 the Mama Africa album was being recorded with with, with, with um with Peter. But it was not with Sly Rabbit, although there might have been one or two tracks that were left over from pre previous um sessions that they used on the album. Right. So Santa was the drummer fully who eventually became the bass player for Peter's band, was living abroad. So them had to bring in a hired bass player who turned out to be Gibby, Gibby Morrison. So all of them tuned the John and B. Good and Glass House and them things, they, they contracted Gibby to play on the album. All right. But he Stop working this up. Stop yeah. working this up. We're going to come back. We're going to reset the live. We could just take, we have like a minute left. We could take some time, big up some people in the place. 
Big up, busy. Dalton just joined. Respect my boss. Trying to call you all long. You know, answer me. Lengthy. Benji, big up. Um, Jazwa, big up yourself. Trombo Clark, big up yourself. Bad saxophone. Bad, bad trombone player from um, Montego Bay. All right. Wade, I see you. Dean Fraser. See, Dean Fraser said, um, light up the chalice and the bodies we two in the team. In a Buckingham Palace. Right? You want, big up yourself, Mr. Simpson. Ron Garrix, big up yourself. Um, some more people in the place or so. Sharpman, big up yourself, can you write? Jafrican, big up yourself. J5, miles and respect. What are people there? I yell you, Rabbit. Yeah, man, just have time for look down on the screen and I see the same thing where I read that at Mercy. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. Let's up. I appreciate it. All right, right Jazz that. one. Let me see you put my name in our in in black letters. <laughs> <laughs> Box Lunch Productions. Manners and respect. Yeah, man. Musician plays up instrument. This is the platform where we, 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 we express and share the journey. All right, we share the journey up. The road. We share what I'm going. Scatterlights, big up yourself. Scatterlights, original scatterlights. I them page that. Alright? Tony Ruption, I see you. Big up. Big Zaga. up. Zaga. Zaga is a must. Alright? Over there, sir. Ruption coming up, you say now? Ruption, Tony Ruption next week. Remember, we're moving the platform to Music Journey JA. At Music Journey JA. That's where we're moving the platform to. Yes, Goofy. Goof, goof us there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Canon. Somebody just asked for you the other day. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you can say. I hear the Quincy Jones are again. I had a Tim call. I had a Tim used to call me one time. I used to come over. I ended up calling me Lynn Square. <laughs> Lynn Square. <laughs> Canon, give me that name then. Yeah. Alan, just give me the name Lindsay. Lindsay. All right. Alan, so, thank you, people. Music journey. We'll be right back. We'll do the reset thing. And I'll, uh, so, um, so we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Up next, part two of Music Journey. Remember to tap the like and subscribe buttons. Share and follow us on Instagram at Music Journey JA for updates on upcoming guests. Thank you.